Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode one of a new adventure, a new LP that we'll be doing. So today is actually my rest day in between my blocks of scheduled um, three days of playing the same game, which I've been doing on my channel recently. Um, that means making as many episodes for an LP in three days as I can, and then uploading them. And today's adventure starts for a little game called Gordian Quest. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that right. This is a pretty deep and complex RPG with uh, cards. It includes a card game uh, type of interface, but the actual RPG elements and stuff are pretty strong from what I understand. It's like sort of like a D&D campaign with cards attached to it, so... I don't know much about it, um, but I do know that we're going to be playing it. I've set some time aside for it, like I said, a, a few days. And uh, we're going to see what it's like and hopefully have a good time along the way. So let's get right into it. Double click on Gorgian Quest or Gordian Quest. And uh, see what this game is all about. I've been excited to play it. Um, I think it sounds pretty interesting with its... Uh, you know, D&D &D type comparisons that people are making. That the developers themselves make, I believe. So, should be interesting at the very least. Mixed Realms. Swagsoft and Coconut Island. Boom. Okay. Let's, um, check this out. Let's go to the options first, as always. Nice, borderless window. No V-Sync. Colorblind mode, I have that enabled. I'm not sure how that changes things, but I am colorblind in real life. Got that. Um, screen shake in combat. Camera zoom on kill. Spacebar to end turn. Um, I'll let you know turn start. Double click card to play on self. Action speed. Okay. Seems good. Um, does that make any difference, like, to their intelligence? Alright. Let's, uh play a game. Campaign mode. Play through the acts, a long-form epic experience that spans across multiple contents, 15 to 30 hours. That sounds awesome. What are the other options, though? Oh, here they are. Realm mode, a quick and frantic mode that pits you against increasingly unfavorable odds to see how far you can go. And skirmish, a one vs one online duel. So we definitely want the campaign. Let's hit new game. You have an ongoing campaign. You'll lose progress. Okay. I only played it for like a few minutes just to see what was up. Alright, so here is the map. Gordian Quest consists of locations you must travel to, unravel the curses that have befallen them. So we've got some locked areas and then Act 1 Westmire. Silverkeep, a town situated on the far isolated western reaches of the world. Its quiet existence is now threatened by the undead rising in droves against the living. Come to Silverkeep's defense and uncover a treacherous plot that will span Westmire. And the other continents. Um, I don't know what those mean. Alright, so... Prologue. Do we actually want the prologue? Let's hit prologue. Many moons ago, Vorendia was once a sprawling mass of land with bountiful resources inhabited by both Vanai and man. Hmm. The Vanai, relentless and greedy in their quest for knowledge, drew upon these resources to experiment with powers far beyond their understanding. Angered by their arrogance, the gods banished them and shattered Brendia into pieces, ah. marring each with a different curse. Interesting. Vanai faded from history. And man was left to inherit the punishment. Centuries of chaos and fright ensued, and from the darkness, heroes were forged. You are one of the few willing to brave the unforgiving threats of each region in search of a cure for Vrendia's curses. Cool, sounds neat. Your adventure begins in Westmire, 
A region slowly crumbling under the rift. An unholy gateway to the nether realm. Uh. You will need to challenge and defeat the rift lord to purge Westmire of its curse. Should you survive, remember that it's just the first of many cursed regions. Your quest is far from over. Cool. Your journey will be fraught with peril, but you will have might and magic on your side. Might and magic. The nights will be cold, but your trusted companions will keep you warm. Sounds good. Your enemies will be strong, but in time you can grow stronger. Awesome. Now, gather your wits and steal your courage. Your Gordian quest is about to begin. Alright, that was pretty cool. So that's the prologue. Um, I guess there's no actual gameplay in the prologue. It's just the uh, the intro video. Alright, okay, Westmire. Alright, let's hit next. Alright, you pick your starting hero. You'll gain a chance to recruit other heroes later. We've got three... Spend Renown to discover new artifacts. Artifacts are objects that grant a variety of beneficial effects to your party. Obtain Renown by completing acts or runs in Realm Node. Okay, so we've got... Okay, we've got Lucius, a sword hand. Lucius is a former soldier who now wanders the realm as a free agent, helping those in need. He's an expert combatant and possesses strong battle instincts which make him a natural leader on the field. He's got swordsmanship, focused strongly on one-on-one -on -one fighting prowess. Warrior, focus on general combat ability and crowd control. And leadership, focus on buffing yourself and allies. Alright, then we've got Ida, the druid. Ida is a wild child who seeks to defend her forest home from the evil that encroaches upon the land. With both her valiant animal companions and her mastery over the forces of nature. She's got primal, raw fighting power and transformation abilities. Cool. Elemental, mastery over the elements of nature. Animal Kinship focuses on summoning and synergy with the familial animals of the wild. Turn it down a little bit my headphones. Catherine the Cleric. Uh, Catherine is a cleric of the Holy Order. Holy warriors who train to combine both faith and steel to become paragons of justice and strength. As a peacekeeper of the realm, she fights tirelessly to defend the realm against threats of both physical and supernatural in origin. She's got Divine, channeling the power of the gods to lay waste to your foes. Holy Warrior, combining offensive and defensive abilities that are mostly martial in nature. And Spirit heal Healer, focus on empowering, protecting, and restoring your allies. We've got Naran, or Naran, the Bard. Naran yields a delicately precise form of magic through a series of harmonies. She can lead a turbid orchestra that feeds fear or a soothing aria that inspires courage where there was none. She wanders the realm in pursuit of adventures and companions that can inspire her music. Metal. Her spirit is in, indefatigable and her music is an extension of that. Um, controls the ebb and flow of battle to keep the upper hand and glamour. Magically inclined bards can perform otherworldly lullabies that hold audiences in rough rapture. We've got Bertram the Ranger. Bertram is a ranger of the wild, being an expert tracker and a highly adaptable survivalist. He is often called upon for hunting and scout scouting missions. His skills make him uniquely suited for leading expedition groups through unfamiliar terrains. He's got sharpshooter, mastery of different arrow types and bow techniques to take out foes at any distance. Trapper, controlling and defeating enemies through the use of traps. And sentry, construction of automated field weapons to turn the tide of battle. Then we've got Kudo, the warlock. Kudo hails from one of the many splinter tribes that live in the Azul Desert. To survive the harsh conditions, he is, his kind has learned to mani bleh, manipulate their own blood as a weapon. Um, oh, we see a complexity score, too, out of three. His is a three out of three. Blood magic holds great power, freshly spilled blood even more so. Malediction, debilitate and punish your foes. Project curses. Uh, reaping, sour the ground on which your enemies stand, their defeat will be inevitable. We've got Alphonse, the scoundrel. Alphonse is a scoundrel who has spent time among the best of the worst. Honorable thieves, unscrupulous cutthroats. 
and deadly assassins. The world is his playground and he intends to stay alive with his wits and cunning. Assassin skills focus on building up and dealing high single target damage. Sabotage, controlling the battlefield through implements and traps. Subterfuge, focus on sowing chaos among enemies through poison and deception. We've got Jendaya, the Golemancer. While her Sakani peers relentlessly pursued the rituals of war, Jendaya's interest lay in deconstructing the Van Eyes' lost technology. She commands a golem that is both her companion and defender. Geomancy shapes earth and clay to defend yourself. Command Rocky, control your faithful golem companion. And Synthesis, an unyielding bond with your golem, allowing you to draw strength from it and vice versa. We've got Pierre the Spellbinder, an academic and keeper of the books. Pierre studies the ancient magics that the ancestors wielded in their ascent to power. With the recent resurgence of evils in the land, he has taken it upon himself to study these phenomena firsthand. He's a spellbinder. Evocation skills focus on the elements of fire and ice to lay waste to the battlefield. Force focuses on defense, utility, and control of the battlefield. And conjuration focuses on creating ethereal objects to protect and to harm. And then finally we have Stroud, the monk. Far removed from the world, a select few monasteries lay hidden and scattered across Rendia. It is in these austere halls that they pass down teachings of old, training acolytes like Stroud to fight against the evils that rise against the realm. And Path of the Body, master the body and overcome your limitations. Path of the Mind, master the mind and think with perfect clarity, not fear. Path of the Spirit, master the heart and unshackle yourself from the chains of self-doubt. Alright, so lots of interesting characters here. Um, I think to start... I might go ahead and um, maybe Catherine. Uh, let's check her skills again as a cleric. Her complexity is only one. Uh, divine skills focus on channeling the power of the gods to lay waste to your foes. Holy warrior, combining offense and defense abilities that are mostly martial. And spirit healer, empowering, protecting, and restore your allies. That sounds really good. Alphonse the scoundrel sounds pretty cool. I'm not too crazy about the sabotage, controlling the battlefield through implements and traps. Um, the golem is neat. They're all pretty cool. Pierre the Spellbinder. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead. Naran is very cute. I like her. And pick um, Catherine the Cleric. So let's go ahead and choose. Our, let's look at our stats. We've got Strength. Affects your damage when using red cards, strength skills, and performance and challenges involving physical strength and endurance. So she's got a 13, which is a plus one. Dexterity affects your damage when using green cards. And performance and challenges involving agility and reaction. And intelligence affects your damage when using blue cards. And performance and challenges involving knowledge and perception. And you can see what the bonus points above 10 grant. So she's got a 14 every two points above 10. So she's got a plus two damage to blue cards, plus two bonus to intelligence challenges, and plus one to fire, cold, and lightning resist. All right. So let's choose our starter deck. Um, we've got a specialization. We can go cleric. Uh, it doesn't really give us a description. Reverend. An enforcer. And a Mender. And the stats change here. So here's Mender. Here's Enforcer. Gets a bit more strength, it looks like. Reverend gets a bit more intelligence. And I kind of like just Cleric. Um, if we look at the skills. Oh, these are all the skills here. Okay, so Divine Hammer, Blessed Strike, Smite, Debilitating Bolt, Righteous Blow, Shield Block, Deflect. Holy Force, no healing, I notice. Just got Deflect, though. A Reverend gets Blessed Strike, um, Debilitating Bolt, Prayer, which gains Focus, whatever that is. Smite, Shield Block, okay. Um, Enforcer, Press the Attack, a few Divine Hammers, a few Blocks, Empower, Shield Block. And Mender's the one that gets the healing, Cure Ailments, Holistic Care. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and be the good, old-fashioned cleric. Seems pretty cool. Um, 
I think that's what we're going to be. Let me let me look again. Bless strike. She, the Reverend gets three bless strikes. The built in bolt. Two smites. A prayer. A sh two shield blocks and three deflects. And a yeah. Cleric only gets two bless strikes, but gets a divine hammer and a righteous blow. Enforcer is too offensive for me. Um. And then Mender, of course, only one blessed strike. It's two strikes, though. Yeah, let's go ahead and be the cleric. And uh, hit next. Now, our difficulty on higher difficulties, your tactical abilities will be truly put to the test. Standard mode, you'll revive in town upon being defeated in battle. Um, hard. For veteran players who want a greater challenge and to be kept on their toes, enemies have access to stronger abilities. Um, probably going to play on hard. Normal is a slightly more challenging adventure that is still forgiving to the occasional mistake. Yeah, we'll play on hard. Uh, so again, this is for veteran players who want a greater challenge and to be kept on their toes. Plus 5% increased item rarity. Globally, enemies have access to stronger abil abilities and 75% chance for elite enemies to have special traits. Which all sounds good, right? So, um... Let me out my smoke here and then we'll get into it, okay? Hard. Uh, next is also Nightmare and Torment, but... To help you master the basic combat rules, your first battle will be a quick guided tutorial. During this sequence, only your first hero will be used. Holding down control will allow you to see more information on a skill card's values. Alright, let's get right into it. Right into the tutorial. Should be cool. I'm gonna hit my water bottle here, a little thirsty. Hmm. Officer Aaron, you there! You were with the soldiers that came in from the south, with me! The undead ahead looked like nasty ones. We'll push through this group and regroup with Captain Roderick and his men in the garrison. If you're handy with that weapon of yours, now would be a good time to use it. Okay, so... Perform an attack by picking a card, then picking a target in range. Okay, we've got Debilitating Bolt, which applies 9 Vulnerable. Vulnerable is we'll take X more damage on the next turn. And we have... Oh, we have a couple Blessed Strikes. Uh, reduces the cost of channeled spells. Gain one channel. Let's go ahead and make them more vulnerable, I guess. Um, deal six damage. Uh, pick a target. Um, let's hit that one. Now do the same with the defense card, but play it on yourself instead. We've only got shield block, so um, shield block on ourselves. Every skill has an action point cost, shown in the orb in the card's top left corner. Okay, so one. Spend your remaining AP wisely. We've got guard uh, activated. Block up to four damage this round. Prevents receiving debuffs while active. And armor. Guard is not reduced for the next one hits. Reduce by one each time you take damage. Okay, reduces the guard. Yeah, we have one AP left. 5% cold lightning and damage resist. Um, next would be, I guess we can buff this. Oh wait, each copy of this card can only be played once per turn. Well, each copy, so I guess this would uh, stack. Let's do this. Bless Strike on, um... On, uh, you. Oh, I moved, okay. You spent all your AP, press end turn. It looks like we got a potion down there. Bite. And bite. Nice one. I must admit I took you for an amateur, but now we might survive this one just yet. By my side, let's take them down together. You can move heroes on your side of the field. Moving a cell costs 1 AP. Click on the highlighted cell to check the movement cost. Click again to confirm the move. Alright, so it'll take 1. Boom. You can also move around with special utility skills. Spending AP builds up a resource called Strategy Points, 
shown as a purple bar under the hero. Spend one SP to play the shift guard to move beside Officer Aaron. A purple bar. Oh, I guess in our case it's this bar. It's not purple because of colorblind. Shift one. Shift is move a target into adjacent cell. Automatically appears in hand when you have sufficient SP to play it. Alright, so let's click it and move there. Officer Aaron possesses a trigger card which can help you in this battle. Hover over the icon on him to pre preview it. Attack while standing be beside him to trigger this effect. Okay, there's his trigger card. Attack of opportunity. When an ally in the row attacks, follow up and deal 9 damage. This skill activates conditionally, then discards itself. Um, remains in hand on turn end and has targeting unique to this skill. Hover over the intent or read the card's description to learn the skill's targeting. Okay, when an ally... Okay, so we just have to attack and... They'll follow up with 9 damage. Um, I guess Holy Force. Reveal, create a card that lasts for the duration of this battle only. And Temp, last until discarded. Deal 14 damage, melee. And reveal one Temp common card. Oh, I can't reach back there. So I guess just the Blessed Strike is going to do it. But I don't know how he's going to follow up with 9. He's not. Triggers are discarded after one use, but can be drawn again from the deck. Now finish off this battle. Okay, I guess we can Holy Force now. Oh, it's going to end it right there. Boom. Didn't have to huh? trigger. Well fought. Let's get a move on before more of them come. The garrison is just up ahead. Victory! 250 XP. Last hit bonus and... Battles, camping, and events can raise synergy. A higher synergy value grants access to more unique tactical cards. So synergy plus one. And we're level one. Very cool. Oh. We can take Renown. I guess, wait, do we get just one? Oh, we get all three. Legendary currency item. Renown can be traded for artifacts, maps, and for access to the Maelstrom Gate in Act 4. Your reputation may precede you, but your methods are known only to yourself. 13 gold, common currency item, the coin of the realm used for greasing palms and making trades. And Empyrean League, Rare Boots, grants shift, plus one strength, plus one rank to a random move skill. In hand on battle start, and plus one cold resist. And has two sockets. Nice. Very cool. Exhaustion can only be removed by resting at an inn. Oh yeah, this is already very RPG-like. Act 1, Trouble in Westmire. Oh, we've got some points of interest we can check out. Guess we have to come here to the guild hall. But let's look around first. We've got our gold. Supplies, essential adventuring supplies when traveling overland or through the darkest dungeons. Fate, a measure of your good fortune and karma used for altering your destiny. Spend points to redo a bad challenge roll, taking the new outcome. That's cool. If negative, you'll be forced to reroll successes, taking the new outcome. Reroll successes, not failures. Um, then we've got Renown. Okay. Let's go click on the guild hall. Listen. Welcome to the garrison. It isn't much, but it'll have to do on such short notice. Where are my manners? I'm Officer Aaron of the town's guard. Wish we had met under better circumstances, naturally. This here is our guild hall. We've converted it to house survivors like yourself, so make yourself at home. In the meantime, you should speak with Captain Roderick. He's in charge around here. Okay, Captain Roderick. Uh, At ease, Officer Aaron. And greetings, Traveler. Your arrival to our fair city couldn't have come at a worse time. The undead curse that lays on this land has been a thorn in our side for centuries, but an attack of this magnitude? Unheard of. <sighs> Foul magic has disabled the waypoints as well. It smells like the work of enemy action, if you ask me. Indeed, Officer. Anyway, Captain Roderick's the name. I'm in charge of this garrison. We've already evacuated the civilians to High Home before the incident with the waypoints, so it's just battle essential personnel here. The situation's dire. We've got our hands full tending to the injured, so I urge you to help my men push back the undead in the immediate area. The dead outnumber us three to one out there. My most pressing concern now is the garrison's storehouse up north. It's been overtaken by local gangs, but if you can wrestle control back from them, it would greatly help the defense effort. Leave it to us, sir. I've got a good feeling about this one. Godspeed, and keep your wits about you out there. Huh? Before we leave, let's see if you can recruit help from the guild hall. 
things will go a lot smoother with another pair of hands. Okay, so we've got Sister Ophelia, Guildhall, um, check the Guildhall, I guess. Okay, view the help page to learn more about events. The guild hall is wide and airy, originally designed to accommodate crowds for the town's festivities. Now it is a temporary refuge for soul and face adventurers nursing all manners of injuries. Most shirk away as you approach, unwilling to head back out. Party decision. Continue gaining a new party member. Um, okay. It's an event we're in right now. You're about to ride off finding a hire when you run into a fellow adventurer. Oh, we get to pick. Interesting. So I'm a cleric, so who would be good to have by my side? Um, cleric and a monk, cleric and a warlock. Um, so we get to control them, so ultimately, you know, I get to, I get to pick who I want to control here. Um, Lucius is a safe bet. Pierre the Spellbinder. His complexity is two, so maybe a little higher complexity would be good. Um, Ida the Druid. Again, she's got raw power and transformation abilities. Mastery over the elements of nature and animal kinship. Summoning and synergy with the familial animals of the wild. Oh, they're all so cool. Naran has metal, indefatigable, and her music is an extension of that. Control the ebb and flow of battles to keep the upper hand and glamour. Perform otherworldly lullabies that hold audiences in rapture. Um, she's a safe bet right now. Then we have Gollum, though. She's got Geomancy, Shape Earth and Clay, Command the Faithful Golem, and an Unyielding Bomb with the Golem, allowing you to draw strength from it and vice versa. I might pick Neron. Her complexity is three, but she's very interesting to me. So choose her starter deck. She's got Bard, Troubadour, Minstrel, and Sonneteer. Let's go through them. We've got Bard, Intro of Vigor, Vigor. It draws a one, um, draws one card. Remove Tones. Tones refer to metal, tempo, and glamour. They can be consumed to boost certain cards. Add Metal. When active, enables the bonus effect of red to Tones. And Intrinsic, always draw this card at the start of the battle. Okay, so we always do an Intro of Vigor. Um... Versa Vigor grants four critical. Your next hit deals X more damage. It, the effect ends on end turn. And Inspiration gives bonus effects for chorus cards. Reduces by one on round end. Yeah, this is pretty complex. Um, Bardic Expertise for every Inspiration. Allies gain six critical. Allies gain six guard. Allies gain one channel. Limited chorus to chorus. Consume all inspiration. If inspiration is at max before consuming, increase max inspiration by one. Um, bouncing hit. Repeats on adjacent targets. Deal seven damage and chains forward. Scatter hit. Deal four damage to all enemies. Block. Dodge and deflect. Okay, so those are straight, uh, straightforward enough. Troubadour has one intro of vigor. Verse of abating. Apply four vulnerable to an enemy. Gain one inspiration and metal. It's potent. Applied status on this skill ignores guard. And metal adds six vulnerable. Okay, so a debuffing type. Chorus of abating. Apply four vulnerable to all enemies. Metal plus two vulnerable for every inspiration. Okay, so we would want to um, get some inspiration going, but nothing she has. Okay, gain one inspiration. She would have to do some verses of abating and then hit him with a chorus, basically. Um, or a bardic expertise, which also consumes the inspiration and gives, let's see, metal, six critical, 
um, than the other two. Guard or channel. Bouncing hit, chains forward, and three blocks. Minstrel, intro of swiftness, gain two vigil, which generates 30% guard for the next X instances. Remove tones, metal, tempo, and glamour. And it adds adds um, tempo when active enables the bonus effect of green tones so her green tones will gain four guard and gain one inspiration and then she hits them with a chorus all allies gain five guard plus three guard for every inspiration um, allies gain six guard for every inspiration with bardic expertise I see how it works now ricocheting hit um, Deal five damage, chain two times, and three dodges. And Sonneteer, intro of Mystique, draws one card, removes tones, and adds intrinsic, or adds um, glamour, which are blue. Scatter hit four damage to all enemies. Rhythm of Spirit, target gain, ally gains one channel, and you gain one inspiration. And choose um, choose a card in hand and place to top of your draw pile. Verse of Evocation deals seven cold damage, gain one inspiration. Gives bonus for chorus cards. Reduces by one on round end. Chorus of Evocation. Bardic expertise deflect, deflect, deflect. Um. I kind of like Troubadour, making enemies vulnerable. Granting critical. No, I want to grant critical, so let's just stick with regular Bard. Plus, she gets a block, dodge, deflect. Different. She's more versatile this way. She gets blue, green, and red. Yeah, I like adding critical. So we'll go ahead with Naran and recruit her. Bard level 1. You leave the guild hall, new companion in tow. Humble beginnings, but a beginning nonetheless. Saving. Awesome. Now we've got Sister Ophelia. Oh. By the light, you look like you've seen better days. I will do what I can to heal your wounds, but anything beyond that... Well, resources are strained at the moment as we fend off the undead. Please do what you can to protect the innocents here. If necessary, return to the sanctuary for further healing. Light guide you, traveler. You are restored, child of light. So here we can get medical aid, healed up to 50% of their maximum HP. Healing, heal party 2 maximum HP and remove all negative persistent status effects. Resurrect a fallen hero. Give alms a worthwhile donation to a charitable cause. 50% chance to earn fate. Which again, um, spend fate points to redo a bad challenge roll, taking the new outcome. So that's always good. Okay, oh, we can also buy. This is all we have to offer. Medicinal Leaf, when used in battle, adds grit into your hand. When used outside battle, restores 2 HP. She's got a small health vial. When used, restores 15 HP. Stamina, only usable in battle. Recover 1 AP, cannot go over your max AP. Those are pretty interesting. Um, these are freshly brewed. View equipped items, we'll get into that. Uh, chat. Intro. I am Ophelia, High Priestess of the Order. The Order consists of different groups with various functions, but we all act together to become the sword and shield of the common people. With the left palm, we share our teachings with those who will listen and provide our medicinal services to those who are in need. With the right fist, we upkeep the law and maintain justice. Um, what about this undead attack? It happened all too suddenly. I lost a good many of my brothers and sisters in the attack. And if it were not for the captain's quick response, I would not be here as well. This fort is home until someone can figure out exactly what is going on and put an end to it. What do you think of Captain Roderick? While I'm in charge of domestic matters in the fort, I must put my faith in the captain and his men to keep us safe. And the waypoint? Strange magic is afoot far beyond our understanding. No known magic is powerful enough to hinder the waypoint's function. That much I know. However, my duties keep me too busy to investigate further. The number of wounded soldiers keeps rising. Okay, we've got chat. Um, Alright, thank you, Sister Ophelia. May the light lift your burdens. 
Saving, and I guess we're on our own now. June the Blacksmith, Captain Roderick. Um, okay, we've got Town, we've got Journal, Skill Grid, Heroes, Map, Help and Menu. Okay, let's check out Journal. Alright, um, Troubling Times, the main quest, the Restless Dead main quest, take back the storehouse, shows completed quest, all quests, um, the Restless Dead. We can view the location on the map, take back the storehouse. Okay, very cool. Alright, so let's head to June the Blacksmith. You look like you can use an upgrade. Wow, very cool. Flail, got some weaponry. Some boots and armor. We'll have to see what we're wearing. Um, and that's all equipment she's got. Uh, we can sell. Oh, we picked up those Imperial League boots, right? And a small health file. Buy back. And chat. Hello? Hey there, I'm June, resident blacksmith at your service. Granted, it doesn't look like much, but it's the best we can do until something's done, done about the undead out there. Um, undead attack. They came from nowhere and without warning. Look, I'm pretty handy with a hammer, but those things, they were vicious. I'm just glad to have made it here alive. The waypoint. Great question, but absolutely wrong person. I'll leave that problem to the adults in the room. Maybe talk to Wynn if you see her around. She's the brainiac around here. Talk to Wynn, okay. We'll, um... We'll be back, June. Okay, now we've got someone down here. Captain Roderick. Um, we can chat with him. Oh, okay, here's how you look at what they're carrying. Just click there. We'll get into that, though. Let's see his intro. I'm Roderick, Captain. If you're being formal, expect formalities... Except formalities won't mean a thing if we don't get out of this alive. My job is to keep the survivors out there breathing as long as possible. And just maybe we'll buy enough time to figure out a way out of this. I'll need you to be my eyes and ears out there, so stay sharp. Undead attack. It happened out of the blue. They came pouring out from the ground in droves, and there was just too many to deal with. I sent my men to corral up as many survivors as we could find to form a safe zone here. We got most of the women and children out before the waypoint sputtered out, at least. We need to get to the bottom of this, and fast. Repairs? It's nothing fit for royalty, but it'll have to do for now. In a short while, we'll have the forge up and running for service work in a bit, and mattresses in the end if you need a place to rest. Thank you, Captain Roderick. Um, can click some peeps here. Waypoint's off limit. Take it up with the captain if you got a problem. Okay, um... The inn is shuttered. You hear repairs going on inside. The store is in a wretched state with broken shelves and counters. The owner has long since fled the area. What's happening isn't right. None of it is. A boutique shop, though vacant at the moment. It appears to have survived the invasion fairly unscathed. And this looks to be a place of learning, but there's no one around. There's the waypoint. It looks like a teleport of some sort. Um, we go up here. Gotta turn over the graves to make sure we don't get swarmed in our own backyard. Okay, now how do I save? Um, escape. Okay, you can ch you can change difficulty. That's cool. Um, be right back, guys. Alright, we're back. It's already 39 minutes in, so we're gonna pretty much wrap it up, but... Before we do, let's go ahead and check the heroes. Naran, um, let's see her, her stats down here. Um, let's see her cards, which we already saw. Um, we can see her equipment. She's not wearing anything special, so just basic clothing, pretty much. Her resources, gold supplies, fate. Synergy, stratagems are special skills that utilize strategy points represented by a purple segmented bar below the hero's health bar in combat. Special hero combos called synergies can be unlocked as their relationships improve. You can gain synergy by having heroes buff and defend each other in battle, making decisions in events that allies support, or through interactions during camping. 
Building up synergy grants access to more utility cards and also increases the amount of points you can allocate to synergy skills. Nice. You can obtain the second and third synergy slots by unlocking them on the skill grid. They become available after 12 and 45 skill points are spent. Use this button to swap out or view available skills that can be placed in the synergy slots. Battles, camping, and events can raise synergy. A higher synergy value grants access to more unique tactical cards. So we've already got shift in there, I guess. Yep. One out of one. Synergy. Good. We're good to go. All right. Um, is there anything else we want to check here? We can definitely use some new equipment. We're level one. She's got pretty balanced stats here. Skills we've seen. Um, can edit the deck. We'll check out the skill grid just quickly, but okay, max summon count two, max hand draw five. 15 initiative, I'll check us out. We only have eight initiative. Um, we have some resists. Okay, cool, but let's uh quickly just check out the skill grid. Um, there, okay, we have a divine holy warrior and spirit healer skill um shoot i don't know um is this the entire skill grid or is there more spirit healer huh and then her skill grid neuron metal tempo and glamour um shows our deck and then okay you can gain like maximum hp increase your stats um, get bonuses to initiative, learn a skill from your school of choice, tier one talent socket, you can swap in talents, increase skill rank. So these actually aren't the only skills. Once you get past these, it's probably going to open up an even bigger tree. So really awesome stuff so far. I really dig it. All right, guys, one second. All right, guys, so I want to wrap it here and say thank you for joining me. Um, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, a quick look at the beginnings of Gordian Quest and what's sure to be definitely an epic adventure, guys. I'm, you know, want to go through this. I'm not saying we'll finish it in this first in these three days that I'll be playing it, but we'll definitely make some progress, have some fun, and that's what matters, guys. So I hope you'll join me for the next uh, episodes of Gordian Quest and beyond. And um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Much love sent out to you. Much peace and joy as well. And uh, stick with me next time because we will probably go ahead and start our first quest and get into some combat with the undead and stuff like that. So hope to see you guys there. Uh, yeah, cool game, right? Let's get into it. Peace.